Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal-lazina kafaru. Wal-lazina kafaru. Fata'asal lahum. Fata'asal lahum. Wa adalla a'malahum. Wa adalla a'malahum. Thalika bi'annahum. كَرِهُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ كَرِهُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ دَمَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ دَمَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وللكافرين أمثالها. وللكافرين أمثالها. ذلك بأن الله. ذلك بأن الله. مولى الذين آمنوا. مولى الذين آمنوا. وأن الكافرين. وأن الكافرين. لا مولى لهم. لا مولى لهم. إن الله. إن الله. يدخل الذين آمنوا. يدخل الذين آمنوا. وعمل الصالحات. جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار والذين كفروا يتمتعون ويأكلون كما تأكل الأنعام والنار مثوى لهم وكأي من قرية هي أشد قوة من قريتك التي أخرجت أهلكناهم فلا ناصر لهم أفمن كان على بينة من ربه كما زين له سوء عمله واتبعوا أهواءهم مثل الجنة التي وعد المتقون مثل الجنة التي وعد المتقون فيها أنهار مما إن غير آسن وأنهار من لبن لم يتغير طعمه وأنهار من خمر لذة للشاربين وأنهار من عسل مصفى ولهم فيها من كل الثمرات ومغفرة من ربهم كمن هو خالد في النار وسقوا ماء حميما فقطع أمعاءهم ومنهم من يستمع إليك حتى إذا خرجوا من عندك قالوا للذين أوتوا العلم ماذا قال آنفا أولئك الذين طبع الله على قلوبهم واتبعوا أهواءهم والذين اهتدوا زادهم هدى وآتاهم تقواهم فهل ينظرون إلا الساعة أن تأتيهم بغتة فقد جاء أشراطها فأنا لهم إذا جاءتهم ذكراهم صدق الله العظيم
Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us a tawfiq, the divine guidance to be here. <clears throat> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to read these verses and understand these verses and practice upon these verses. Uh, the previous verses before ayah 8, we're starting from ayah 8. Before that, previously we had mentioned from the beginning of Surah Muhammad. This surah is called Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Initially, at the beginning of Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it mentioned kufar and, uh, the, and the fusaq. They, they were mentioned, the kufar and the fusaq. Also, it mentioned warfare, right? It had mentioned uh, um, some rules of warfare, engagement. Also, it mentioned inmates, how to, how to treat inmates. And also, it gave the principle of how we take the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the principle was how to take the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whoever helps the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance will be with that person. So today's verse, the first verse, verse 18, and it translates, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And those who disbelieve, فَتَعْسَلْ لَهُمْ There will be destruction for them. وَأَضَلَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And their, their, their deeds will go to waste. Their good a'mal won't count. Understand? Amal means good amal. So even the good amal of a, of a disbeliever won't count because he does not have proper faith. Then the next verse, the ninth verse. ذلك, that is كَرِهُ, because they dislike ma anzal Allah, what has been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus their actions are deleted. So although the people who are disbelievers, their actions may look good. Some people get impressed by the works that they're doing. may look all good, but it's not going to count for in the, in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the, the iman, the prerequisite is not there. A faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our faith. Mm -hmm. So this is what's mentioned here. Then after that, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Why don't they travel in the earth? So why is this being mentioned now all of a sudden start to talk about travel? Because it mentioned the kufar, the disbelievers, and saying that their actions are not going to count in the akhirah. So a person may think, okay, well, if I do disbelief, the Quran just told me the consequences in the akhirah. So the next verse is trying to tell you, no, there's consequences here too. So that's why it's saying, Afalam yasiru, why don't they travel in the earth? And then they look at the outcomes of those who disbelieve. So saying that the natija, right? We don't use the Arabic word natija. In Urdu, we say natija, the outcome. The outcome, so there's outcomes of disbelief in the Akhirah, there's going to be outcomes of your of disbelief also in this world. So Allah SWT is uh, trying to bring our attention to the world. Look, afalam yasiru, why don't they travel in the earth? Fayanzuru and look, kaifa kana aqibatul ladina min qablihim, what was the outcome of those prior to them? Dammarullahu alayhim, Allah SWT brought utter destruction to them. Walil kafirina, and for the disbelievers will be similar. Is obviously telling the mushrikeen of Makkah. So that if you just travel in the earth, because the Mushikin and Makkah right around them, to the south, to the north, wherever they would travel, they had examples. So the Quran gave them examples that was you know something that they could relate to. They would they, these were their travel routes, and said so just look around you and look at the outcome. We there, so there was a azab for them in the world, and of course the Quran is mentioning that it's also azab for them in the akhirah. And the examples of this are many. Something that's mentioned here, but the, uh, if, you, if you look and the outcome of uh, sin, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their examples are many, many. It's, it's, it's over, over, um, there are many examples of it. Moving on, <clears throat> the next verse. ذَلِكَ That is because بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَوْلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a supporter of those who believe. وَأَنَّ الْكَافِرِينَ لَا مَوْلَى لَهُمْ but those who disbelieve, there's no mawla for them. They don't have any supporters. Allah SWT is saying that, look, if you have iman, you have Allah SWT on your side. And those who are disbelievers, they don't have Allah SWT on their side. This is, this is the result of that. <clears throat> this word mawla, mawla has a lot of meanings. Uh, mawla has a lot of meanings. It has around 8 to 10 meanings. When we say, we call our teachers mawlana sahib. Mawlana sahib. Many, many meanings. It means leader. Um, it, could, it could mean slave. It also mean master. It also has a divine meaning too. We also call Allah as our mawla. Say it like that as well. So obviously, um, so it has all these different meanings. And but here, obviously, we're using it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
And I just have a story written here about the word Mawla, about the Mawla. In the Battle of Uhud, <coughs> um, the Kufar they heard in the Battle of Uhud, you know, apparently that, um, you know, when the, when the Muslims started getting defeat, so the Kufar were, you know, they were rejoicing in the Battle of Uhud. And the, when the Muslims had defeat outwardly, so they were rejoicing. <coughs> and they had heard a rumor was spread that Prophet ﷺ was also um, uh, bartered. So this rumor was spread. <clears throat> so they announced that the Kufar was, were asking the Muslims, did the Prophet ﷺ pass away? Did, was he martyred? So Prophet ﷺ don't, don't respond to it. So their excitement grew that, oh, Prophet ﷺ has, 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 is, has left. <clears throat> then they asked, what about Abu Bakr? Prophet ﷺ told them, just don't respond to them. Let them ask these questions if these people are alive. They didn't respond, so they started getting happy that, oh, they're not responding to them. Maybe they have passed. Whereas Umar, the same thing, stay silent. And then they started saying some ashar. They started doing their poetry. Like it was a habit of the Arabs. They're very eloquent in their speech. So they started praising all their gods, the gods that they had in front of the Kaaba. Um, they were saying, oh, al hawal oh, Uzza. You know, the names of the gods that they knew. They're like, yeah, they that, that's victory. There's no Prophet Sallallahu left. It's Abu Bakr, Umar so then when they were responding, Umar when he heard this, he said, Prophet Sallallahu can we finally respond now? We've been, and son, they've, they've rejoiced enough that they're getting too excited here. Um, we, should, we should respond to them. So Prophet Sallallahu allowed them to go ahead and respond. So the kind of lines that they were using, they resp responded, Allahu a'la wa ajal. Son, Arabs were known, they're very eloquent in their speech. So they were kind of mentioning something similar to that, that Uzza is great. So they were saying, no, Allahu a'la wa ajal, no, Allah is great. And then they also mentioned in there, um, Lana mawla wa la mawla lakum. We have a mawla and you don't have a mawla. We have a supporter, you don't have a supporter. <clears throat> this concept of mawla is very, very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this elsewhere in the Quran. Allah is a protector of those who believe. Allah subhanahu wa is a protector. Remember we do adhkar afterwards. We usually read that verse. Allah subhanahu wa is a protector of those who believe. So we're supposed to have firm belief in that. So as your believer, Allah subhanahu wa is always on your side. So regardless, you may, say you may um, think that, uh, never think that you're not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're a believer. You have that connection. Allah subhanahu wa is the protector of those who he believes. So your good and bad is all on your side. Just like a disbeliever, his good and bad, is, and then they both go against it. But for the believer, it's the opposite. His good and bad both go on his side. So you have firm belief in that. It's a, it's, a, it's a verse that gives you a lot of hope. Allahu waliyu ladina amal. No matter what you're going through in life, but if you remember that, Allah is a protector of those who believe. So that's why if you have such a strong force on your side, why we need to look here and there? You don't need to look here and there. So you need to have your uh, in, um, um, have, have that um, firm belief and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> then moving on. Inna Allah, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yudkhilu ladina amal. He'll enter those who, do, who have iman, that do righteous deeds, jannat in gardens, that rivers flow underneath them. Talking about paradise. So, <clears throat> what's the importance of your garden having a um, river flowing underneath it? I mean, as humans here, how, how, long, how much do we travel to go see a waterfront? Right? I mean, you know, like we, we do all our savings. We have to make sure it's a nice, perfect weekend and then we just get the right spot. Right? You do all that just to be able to go see some water. So this analogy here is that, you know, that that which we strive for so hard, over there is readily available. So in your, in your gardens in Jannah, you just step out of your house and you have rivers, right? That you don't need to move to have that which you strive so hard to get. وَالَّذِينَ <coughs> كَفَرُوا <coughs> But those who disbelieve, يَتَّمَتَّعُونَ so look, on the one hand, the iman and amal salih, they're going to have those gifts. Understand? Okay, so think about that. They're like believers with righteous deeds and who have iman, they're going to have those gifts of jannah and the rivers right underneath their feet, very close to them, these luxuries. And then now bringing it home to the dunya, waladina kafaru and those who disbelieve, they're having temporary enjoyments and they're eating in the world just as the livestock eat. It's comparing that the kufar, the way they 
have these temporary enjoyments and the way they eat is, and they, is comparing it to the animals. The animals also eat, they're also enjoying. And obviously it's not mentioned here, but elsewhere Allah says, don't stretch your eyes to what we have, the temporary enjoyments that we have given the disbelievers. Don't become overly, don't get impressed by that. So, and then over here is compared to the, uh, the life of the animals. When naru maswal lahum, and fire is the abode, fire is the abode. I mean, you, so don't get impressed by looking at the people, how much temporary enjoyments they have, how much they're eating, and the end result is the final abode is the fire. Fire is their final abode. So well, what are we comparing here? There's nothing to compare. <coughs> so meaning the purpose of this ayah is don't get, don't have ta'ajjub, don't be in awe, don't be aspire, you know, aspire, uh, don't get uh, deluded. It's part of the test of the world. And, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many verses, don't, don't stretch your eyes. And that expression, don't, don't stretch your eyes. You know, when you, when you look at something, understand you are, you're forced to stretch your eyes. But when you look at dunya and then you stare hard at it, you, you look carefully at it, like, like a car passed by, you just ignore it. And then you look, no, which car was it? Understand that you look, you stretch your eye out on it. It says, don't do that with the material of that is for the kufar. <coughs> And then this resemblance. So how is there a resemblance between the, the disbelievers and then their temporary enjoyments and their eating is compared to the other animals? There's two, two, two uh, resemblance that, that are here. One is because they have no sharia. Sharia. Look, um, so the animals, they're bound by taqwini laws. Taqwini laws, laws of nature, you know, I said that they have no choice. Like a, a squirrel is going to go on to be a squirrel. Um, you know, it's going to do its things of the animal, taqwini laws, but it's not following, it's not, it's not bound by any sharia. So the kufar are like that. They're also bound just by taqwini laws and they're not bounding themselves by any sharia. Any nabi came to speak to them, address them. They're not concerned with any of that. So it's just, uh, so these two are compared <coughs> because there's no sharia. So what's, what's making, um, this is because there's no sharia there. Also no halal and haram, right? The kufar are not gonna have any halal or haram. The animals don't have any sense of Halal and haram, no tamiz, no tamiz, no, no distinction. <clears throat> and number two, the purpose of life. So for example, the purpose uh, of life for a disbeliever, it becomes eating and enjoying. And what's the purpose of life for the animals? It's also the same thing, these temporary enjoyments and eat. So, so they're, they're compared on that for the purpose of life for a believer is not that is not our tem our temporary enjoyments and eats and food and drink is not the purpose of our life okay? so that's a huge that, that's that distinction <clears throat> so we should be very mindful of this uh sometime you know believer i know there's a lot of ahadith and all that the iman and the of allah that compares these two and says you know there's no compare they're, they're not the same and then people who faith and people who disbelievers are they're two separate categories. It's very, very important. You know, sometimes people make comments like, what do people say? <clears throat> you know, people, they look big, they make people with, who are believers, they look, make them look down. They look down upon them, right? They say things like, um, tell me something. What do people say? Like, uh, you know, like, uh, like uh, how, how the believers don't. They have no sense of uh, yeah, they say, yeah, you know, our believers are like this. Mm -hmm. oh, no, like being the overly impressed, like a kufar, who has a praise to praise a kufar, like, um, oh, they're doing so great. Look at that, but look at us. I'm trying to bring in that example that all oh, the kufar are doing so great, but look at us. Understand? So, I mean, you have to be careful with that. Sometimes you can, I mean, it's fine if you utilize that example, but we have to be mindful of that example. What do you really mean by that? So, but people who have iman have iman, regardless of what state they're in. Regardless of what state then, that Iman does not compare to any of the temporary enjoyments that people have. So always comparing it like that, that oh, Kufar, look at how the believers are. Don't, don't, don't look down upon the believers. Remember Prophet ﷺ was also told that you know, believers have something, they have Iman. And that's the greatest thing in the world is to have the, your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be mindful of it. <clears throat> Moving on. <clears throat> Ayah 13, how many a town, towns 
they were more severe, they were more stronger in strength from your strength, uh, from your town, O Prophet the ones that ex- the ones that expelled you. We destroyed them. Thus, there was no helpers for them. And the Prophet look, the Mushikina Makkah, they're very weak compared to many towns that we've destroyed prior. Like today, Mushikina Makkah are not believing in the Prophet. The nations prior were much more tougher and stronger. They were, they're not even a percentage. Uh, they're a very small percentage in strength compared to the previous nations, but they were destroyed. So, why are Mushikina Makkah becoming all arrogant with this message? <coughs> And then the next verse, is the one who has, who is upon the proofs from his Lord. Like somebody who's seen the proofs of his Lord. He's seen, you know, the, the revelation. He believes in his the Hadambiya. See the proofs of his Lord. Is he the same? Like the one whose evil deeds are adorned for him. And that evil deeds are looking good to him. He's adopting them. And he follows their, his, their desires. And they follow their desires. So on the one hand, you have a person who follows the proofs of his Lord. On the other hand, you have a person who um, the evil deeds look very nice to him. And he follows his desire. Are, you, are they equal? So the Quran, sometimes it doesn't give you answers. It just leaves you a question. He wants you to answer it yourself. So, so the reason it's saying that is that I think human brains end up sometimes comparing the two. We end up thinking they're the same, or one is better than the other. So Allah is saying, never do that. And then these two are not the same. <clears throat> Those who follow their desires. <clears throat> then the next verse is, is descriptions of paradise. Mathalul Jannah, with the example of paradise, the one that has been promised to the muttaqeen, its description is, Fiha anharum mimma in ghayri asim. In it will be rivers of water that doesn't spoil. Meaning it's going to have you know, very um, uh, clear water. Then there's no spoiling of it. Sure. Sometimes we travel long distances and what kind of water short do we end up in front of? I'm saying like, I thought you maybe travel long distance and then you get to a shore and then that shore is probably not the best. You're probably at the wrong spot. So like that. And then, and rivers of milk whose taste doesn't change. Sure. And rivers of wine, who are, which, which are delicious to, for the drinkers. Not something that intoxicates your mind, not some impurity. And rivers of honey, fully purified. Sure. <clears throat> so these are all the gifts of the muttaqi. And for them in it, from every fruit. So in the Jannah, these are going to have every fruit. You know, sometimes in the world, first of all, we can't even get food out, fruit out of season. We always need to have it in season. And then we need to go get it. But over there, everything readily available. Okay? And also forgiveness from their Lord. And that is also part of our sorrow. You know, when we think about, oh, are we going to make it or not? It's like a sorrow that lives with us. But a lot of stress on us and uh, that we go through in life. Is because of and our our thinking was oh, our Lord going to forgive us? Even even sins cause us stress. These all these stress, but you don't have that there, right? All the all those dimensions are gone, and sometimes we get stressed about what people say to us, but all those are gone. Come on, who, so Allah was comparing. Look, so you have one people jannatis who don't get all these gifts. Now again, another comparison. Come on, come means are, is that similar to come on? Who are Khalidun finnar? The other hand are people who are going to be in jahannam forever. And they're going to have to drink from boiling water. This boiling water, man hamim, is not just even boiling water. It's body waste. The, the body waste are going around. And then it's still not even drinkable. It's boiling. And when, if, if, and, um, like it burns you before you even get, bring it closer to yourself. And then if it goes in, then it cuts the intestines. So Allah was saying, look, these two are looking the same to you. It just asking us these questions, there's no answers here, right? It's just saying that are you going to compare these two? Are these equal? <clears throat> and what it mentions the fruits. Oh, and, and uh, let's go back a bit. Drinks. Let, let's go back to the Jannatis. I just I finished translating the ayah. I'm just going over it again. It's kind of explaining it more. 
So when he mentions these drinks, doesn't mean these are the only drinks you have, right? Of course, there's other drinks as well. Not that you're only left with honey option and milk option. Of course, there's other drinks that you will have. Fruits, all types of fruits you'll have. Even the ones in the dunya. They said that the ones in the dunya are just are the are not the original. They're just a copy. Just like the life, our life here is not, this is not the real life. It's temporary. Just like that, the fruits that we've been eating, that we've been enjoying, they were all, uh, they were just, how would you call it? I don't want to say counterfeit. They were, uh, they were samples. Samples, understand? the real, the asal is, just like this life is just a sample. And, then, and uh, as a test, the asal, the real hayat, the real life is when we go to our home in Jannah, inshallah. So many types of drinks, um, fruits, okay. And on the other side, it mentions Jahannam and is asking us the question that are these two states equal? In Jahannam, there's no death, right? In Jannah and Jahannam, there's no, there's no death. In Jahannam, yeah, obviously, if somebody even desired to die, there's, there's no death. There's no such thing as death anymore. Allahumma mm-hmm. <clears throat> Then the next verse. So all these verses up to here, they were kind of just comparing the kufar and the believers and giving example. These are their gift. This was the consequence of the mu'mineen. Now it's talking, now it's going to speak about munafiqi, hypocrites. Why are hypocrites a separate category? Because they're neither here, neither there. They neither properly fit on the believer's side and they're not properly fitting on the kafir side. They're just like, like Allah Subhanahu says in one place in the Quran, la ilaha ula wa la ilaha ula. They're neither in this camp, they're neither in the other camp. Allah Sula, Allah Sula really doesn't like that camp. The Munafiqs. The Munafiqs are in the lowest pit in Jahannam. Then the lowest pit in Jahannam. So here, some uh, hypocrite psychology is going to be mentioned. How do the hypocrites behave? Women <clears throat> home and from them, they listen very carefully to you, O Prophet. Actually, maybe I'll, maybe I'll explain this verse myself first and then, then we'll translate it. <clears throat> Actually, let's translate it first, then I'll explain. So from them are those who listen very carefully to you, hatta idha kharaju min indik, until they exit from your presence. So munafiqs, they come and they listen to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very, 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 very carefully. And then they exit Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's gathering and they say to those utul ilm, people with ilm, meet the other sahaba who are listening, you know, who are the sincere people. They go outside, meet them and say, madha qala anifa, that what were they just saying? In that gathering, what were they just saying? These people, Allah has put a stamp on their heart. These are desire followers. So, basically, they, basically they, they would listen carefully. Like, like really carefully. Understand? Letting the speaker know that we're listening very, very carefully. But their heart was, their heart was closed. You get it? So there's two explanations. You can either say they're either doing mocking, they're mocking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, oh no, we're listening very carefully. And, and they're, they're monophics, right? So inside they don't believe. Um, so either they're making a mockery or either they're really um, like um, they just don't understand what's going on. Like that. So what do we learn from that? We learn that our hearts have to be open to the truth. We have to be internalizing. We have to be ready to practice. Just like, for example, if you compare this verse to the verse we read, remember, uh, uh, I think last dars or the dars prior, we talked about the jinns. The jinns who saw, heard the Prophet ﷺ, they also, same wording, they listened very, very carefully. But their hearts were, their hearts were open and they, they took shahada. They didn't even meet the Prophet ﷺ. They just listened. They were, they were looking for guidance. And then, so I remember we mentioned over there, they have having adab. So although the munafiqs are also having adab, they're listening very, very Carefully, but their door, their heart is shut. So, Allahumma hafazna min, from this state. Basically, when we listen to religious discourse, the purpose is to amal. We have to internalize it, have to act, uh, act upon it. If you're just listening to just, just, just hear it, just hear it, and you don't want to internalize it, I mean, you're not ready to change, then that's like, na'uzubillah, that's like a munafiq type listening. The hypocrite type listening because you're not ready to you're not about to budge from what your lifestyle is and what you are but you're ready to like yeah i'm listening is that some deep psychology mm-hmm. yeah the word istima in arabic is different there's the word samia samia just means listening like you're just listening istima is 
a rose is on the wrong, what you're saying. You know? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an open heart. I'm okay. saying that when we hear the truth, understand? we hear and we internalize. Internalize means it's become yours. Amen. Also, I'm just going a little tangent here. Since my dust is a bit short, say something, inshallah. You know, one of the things about the Quran, uh, it mentions all its topics, it's there on repeat. Like the Quran doesn't do it like this, that the first four paras are about history. The next four, five paras, Jews are about ni'mats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next five Jews are about all the laws. Is it like that? It's not like a table of content book. It's not like that. It, every, every surah is like a letter. Uh, it's like a king's letter to its constituents. The way the kings speak to the constituents. Meaning they, they start off with introduction about who this letter is from and they have a different style. And the short surahs are like short, what is it, memos? Short, uh, you know, letter that, you, that a king writes to its constituents. Listen, this is what's important. And then they don't mind, they don't care about any, how you, how you put your content there. So that's the style. So the style of the surah of the Quran is like a king's letter to his, to his, to his makhluk. And number two, <clears throat> why, are, why is everything repeated? <clears throat> it's so that you can internalize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't repeat the same verse. But it's said in a different manner so that you can internalize it differently. Like it'll tell you the same thing about the akhirah. But it'll say from this angle and that angle. So now for a person who's hearing it for the first time, he'll learn it for the first time because he never heard that before. But for the person who always hears it, um, like yourselves, mashallah, who come, for you all, you internalize it better. See the, see the benefit that comes out of it? Yeah. So for the person who comes to the, the listen to those verses first time, it's his first, his first he learn something new. The guy who already knows about akhirah, he knows about history, he knows about that, but he hears it in a different manner, he's internalized it in a better way. So, <clears throat> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, uh, uh, in, enable us to do amal and internalize these, these verses, inshallah. So they would go out and they would say, uh, قال, what, what was said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the munafiq, that they're, 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 basically they had a stamp on their heart. There's some evil thing that they're doing, as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not enabled them to internalize everything. That's why they have to leave the gathering and say, what did they just say? وَاتَّبَعُوا أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And they follow their desires. So basically, the statements are not going into their hearts. <clears throat> also, in our, in our day and age, there's a slogan, a lot of slogans, one of them. That you listen to everyone and just do what you like. You know the slogan. <laughs> I listen to everyone and then they did like there's a saying like listen to everyone and just do what you like. That's not really internalizing anything because that's you following your desires. Listen to everyone and do what you like. That means you just that's your desires. When are you going to submit? What are you going to submit to? When? Why? How? Let's submit. So in Deen, we don't we have, we're submitting to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we have to. It's different. <clears throat> okay, may Allah make it easy for us. Uh, moving on. The next verse is Ayah 17. And those who have adopted the right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improves in guidance and gives them their piety. Those who have adopted the right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them in guidance and increase them in taqwa. Meaning that if they're in that gathering and they're listening carefully, their guidance increases and their taqwa increases because, they, because their hearts are open. So a proper believer, his, he gets more guidance when he hears the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he hears the reminders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it gets renewed for him. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned munaf, mu'mins and munafiq state. He's mentioned both out of it. This is the believer state and this is the hypocrite state. Moving on to the next verse. So what are they waiting for? Are they only waiting for that moment that it comes all of a sudden? Now it's like addressing the munafiqeen. We could say addressing the munafiqeen or kufar or anyone who is not uh, believing properly. So what are you waiting for? Like why aren't you internalizing these things? Why don't you want to practice what is being said? What is the wait? Are you waiting for? So what's the meaning of sa? Sa is special time. This could be a reference to number one, musibah. You know, like, are you waiting for like tribulation to come upon you? Like, you have a huge musibah. 
Understand? For some people, that is it. Understand? When they get musibah, now they will mend their ways because they've got musibah. Number two is qiyamah. Are you waiting that the sa'ah sa could also mean? Sa'ah could mean musibah. Sa'ah could mean qiyamah. Are you waiting for qiyamah? And then it will come all of a sudden. I mean, it will be too late anyway. So what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the sa'ah? Because so when the sa'ah comes, and then at that time, your iman is not going to count. Right? The third is death. Mot. Actually, that was B. Mot. Sa'ah means. So are you waiting for your death? And It comes to you all of a sudden. So it's, it's addressing the munafiqim. <clears throat> because iman, which counts, is iman bil ghayb. Iman bil ghayb. How much we can do iman bil ghayb. If iman bil shahada doesn't count. Iman bil shahada means that you're seeing all the realities of the hereafter. And I said, now I believe. That faith doesn't count. It's iman bil shahada. Iman bil ghayb is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wanting from us. And so this whole test was designed for iman bil, bil ghayb. <clears throat> and then it says, and verily its signs have come. So saying that how come um, the signs of Sa'a have come. This could also mean that the signs of Yomul Qiyamat have come. There are three types of signs of Yomul Qiyamat. Some that have already passed. Some that are going on. And some that will, that haven't come yet. Okay, The ones, some that have passed, of course, those ones that have passed. And some that we're going through right now, and the third ones that, that, that will come. <clears throat> and then it says, لَهُمْ إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ ذِكْرَاهُمْ And how will it be for them since its reminder had already come? Meaning that if that sa'ah comes, if that time comes of death or of musibah, then at that time, you know, your, these advices are not going to... Because since these advices had already come to, to have iman bil ghayb. So when that sa'ah comes, then it will be too late at that time. This, this was the last verse. I just have a few more comments and then we'll close. This is the last verse we'll be doing today. Um, that the, I have some signs here of Yom al -Qiyama. One of the signs of Yom Qiyamah is the Prophet Sallallahu arrival. Right? He said, Ana was sa'ar kahatain. Me and the sa'ar are like these two, put it together. Right? The humanity's timeline. So we are the last final prophet, final book, final religion. <clears throat> and then there's other signs, uh, some of the signs that we're going through. So that one has already passed. So we'll put Prophet Sallallahu in the category of the sign that has already passed. The ones that we're going through, um, unsuitable candidates, Meaning people are put into office, into position, and they don't deserve it at all. And so people are completely unfit. People are put into an office. Basically, amana is handed over to somebody who is not worthy of taking on that trust. So when you see that happening, uh, that means that sa'ar is closed. Public trust. People start treating public trust as like as it's their own. And then things that are public trusts, people start think, behaving as if it's their personal property. So when you see that, what does that mean? Sa'ar is close. It's a sign of Sa'ar. Sa'ar is close. Number three, disobedience to parents. Like utter disregard for one's parents. Uh, noises in the masjid, like upright. You know, masjid is a place of hurma, sacredness. And you know, people feel like in awe when the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you lose that sanctity, everybody can just so it would just be so loud at certain times at the masjid. So everybody forgot that we're in a very, very, so that type of ghafla. In the masjid, noises are so loud. And music and alcohol become very, very rampant. That's another sign here. So these are the signs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to prepare for the sa'ah. Mm -hmm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to internalize these verses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a connection to his book. Give us tawfiq to practice upon it and do his tilawah. وأخذ دعوانا الحمد لله بالعالمين سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم